PET-CT is turning waste PET bottles into construction materials. Lagos produces about 30,000 tons of plastics waste in just a day, and only 30% of that is recycled. Every time you pass a pile of plastics, you pass a job opportunity. At the first glance, this garage doesn't look like a factory, but more like a scrapyard. However, these young Africans have found success as they convert plastic waste to bricks for construction. Pet City Initiative is a project that came out from uh, a project called Recreate. We started from the collection process first, uh, collecting pet bottles from our environment. And then uh, we now decided, oh, okay, what can we do with these bottles? We are like, um, we can actually make something valuable from it. So that's how the idea of Pet City actually came. We discovered that plastics were a big problem in the environment. But what everybody knew the problem as was plastic pollution. Now, we took a closer look to find out what was the root cause of plastic waste pollution. And we discovered that it was improper plastic waste disposal. And let me make it practical. One kg of waste plastics is equal to 50 bottles. Now, can you imagine how many bottles is created? 30, 30 tons. Like, just picture it, imagine. So, we saw this as a problem, and a problem that really needed a solution. There was no innovation in the recycling industry. What most recycling companies would do is they would gather the waste and send it off to foreign countries to convert. So, we had no innovation here, and that was where we came in. This innovative group have found a solution to addressing the bedeviling issue of environmental pollution caused by the large mass of non-degradable plastic waste and in effect creating more sustainable and durable construction materials. We met Standard Organization of Nigeria to test our bricks. They gave us validation that is actually stronger than the conventional one by compressive strength, water absorption and a lot of other tests. So it's really an amazing project and we actually are excited towards the um, impact it will have in um, Nigeria and also the world at large. If you take a look at the, the building industry, cement is the most uh, significant material you use, right? And replacing that with plastics, because once you're building something, you need a binding agent that is cement. Now we replace that binding agent for plastics. This is where the first stage of the production starts. So here we get a lot of plastics from different women that have been cooking for us. Over 20 women have gathered this amount of plastics for us. So now that he has gotten it into the sack, uh, we just wait, then he transfers it into the um, production pan. So the beauty about this is we don't even have to clean these plastics because they are waste plastics. If we clean them, they are not waste plastics anymore. They are not processed materials. So production is very easy. Here is now transferring the plastics inside. As you can see, it's turning to color black. So why is black is because the plastics are burning. So it burns to an extent where it has reached its elastic limit. So then we can start putting the sand inside. So as we keep putting plastics, we wait till everything is liquid. So right now it's getting to about 260 degrees. So as it's pouring the sand into the, to the mixture, it gets kind of thick. So constantly we keep stirring over and over and over again. So it gets to that viscous level because we just observe to an extent where we know, okay, it's ready for us to you know, pour inside. For us to mass produce this, we have to come up with a better production process. So we came up with um, a machine prototype. One of our team members, a mechanical engineering student, designed a machine that can mix the ratio to which we wanted. This uh, machine is being heated up by an electric power supply. It consumes about 24 um, kilowatts per hour. So that's a lot of energy to get these plastics into the states that we want. So for now, this is what we use and it has been working well for us. So we shake it for any air molecules to escape. Um, from the few tests we conducted, the compressive strength was three times higher than the normal concrete bricks, which means you can use these bricks for bridges, um, 
for construction sites that required a lot of machines that have a lot of weight because in different parts of um, certain communities you have a lot of machines go there and they damage the road so if you have a brick this strong in those areas which means that it would increase the lifespan it would increase the duration to which there is road maintenance plastics are especially problematic if not collected and managed properly they do not biodegrade and could take 500 years or more to fully decompose hence the need for initiatives such as this which leaves us in a better environment creating more sustainable building materials and shrinking unemployment figures for plus tv africa irene ubani you can watch the full story feature on our YouTube channel on Plus TV Africa. Uh, joining us to talk about converting pet bottles to bricks for construction is Plus TV Africa's correspondent Irene Ubani, who discovered uh, that particular story. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much, Felicity. Could you tell us how you ran into that very interesting piece? Oh, as you may know, um when it comes to the disposal of plastic waste in Lagos, particularly where I reside, I noticed that it was becoming, you know, very rampant and then the sewages were clogged with pet bottles and then I started my research and then I discovered that there were some young people in Covenant University, somewhere in Ota, that have been converting these plastic bottles to bricks for construction. So they use it on the road and um, what they discovered was that it was even stronger than the ones that you use um, cement, cement to, make. to make, you know. And I felt it was so innovative and I needed to visit their site and see exactly what it was they were doing. What was most inspiring for you about this? Okay, um, two things. The fact that these are very young students. They're actually students. They haven't even graduated. So we're talking about students between the ages of, say, 16 yeah, already and innovation, 20. Uh, innovative minded. Exactly, exactly. Entrepreneurial ventures, of course, because they started making money off it. Since they started it and then they took it to SON for confirmation and approval, uh, some construction companies have actually reached out to them to say, oh, that we want some of your products. So that was very inspiring for me, the fact that they were able to take on this initiative and convert it not just into business for themselves, but they are now helping the local women within their community who help pick those bottles get, you know, as a means of um, livelihood for themselves. Uh, how, how does this story uh, challenge the lazy youth narrative for you? Oh, of course. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a millennial and I would, I would say that, you know, the Nigerian youth that I know are not lazy at all. <laughs> Those that want to work, work and do very well. And that's why you see that whenever they cross the borders, you know, traveling out of Nigeria, they excel exceptionally. So, yeah, in terms of Nigerian youths being lazy, maybe a few are lazy, but definitely not all of them. They are very hard working. What, what, what kind of support do, they, do you think they will need to continue in this part for them to continue to be innovative and entrepreneur? Okay, of course. I mean, support from the government, support from private sector. You know, sometimes private sector on their own could just, you know, take on the responsibility when they find some of these very innovative you know, um, ideas and things that young people are doing, pouring some form of resource, financial resource into what, whatever it is you're doing. For example, when I saw what these young people were doing, I, no I, I noticed that a bit of expansion, just some financial support will do them a lot of good. So imagine if it's now, I'm not talking about the government because that may just be far reaching, but some pet bottle companies, some companies that actually produce water. These people are helping you recycle. Properly. We know the menace that um, all of these things are doing, both on, in the ocean and on the land. So, you know, just helping with support, financially particularly, that would help. Thank you very much for the work that you do, and thank you for joining us. Thank and you. The news. Thank you, Felicity. Thank you. <laughs>